Researchers have found that something as simple as increasing the recommended dietary allowance of vitamin C could help prevent heart disease, cancer, strokes, and more for just pennies a day. A lot of the chronic diseases would be improved substantially if we had enough antioxidants. So how much are these scientists recommending that we increase the vitamin C? Is it very much? Right. Well, actually, see, there's a big difference in trying to treat scurvy and trying to give people enough vitamin C that they have the antioxidant protection we need. It doesn't take much to prevent scurvy, probably just 20 or 30 milligrams a day. The RDAs now are between 75 and 90 milligrams a day, 75 for women and 90 for men. But uh, the Linus Pauling Institute has done research and they think it should be more like 200 milligrams a day. Well, it still isn't very much. No, it's not. But it's, it's safe that way. And of course, the mainstream medical doctors don't know much about nutrition. They don't study antioxidants. They're not into vitamin C or E or a lot of the things that the USDA talks about for healthy nutrition. And so they tend to poo-poo that. And what we need to do is really look at nutrition in a very much more serious way. And doctors don't get much in the way of nutritional education. Well, a lot of people would think, well, isn't it enough to just drink a glass of orange juice? Mm -hmm. Well, you can get it from your diet, and orange juice has some in. There's no question about that. And if we had the five to nine servings of fruits and vegetables that we need every day, and we had a glass of orange juice, we'd get more than 200 milligrams a day. But who eats that many fruits well, and vegetables a, a day? Well, not enough of us. I think you're right. We need, to, we need to change the way we eat. In this country, we're into fast food more than we're into healthy food. We're more into food products than we are into things that look like real food, like a squash or a watermelon or a cherry. Those are good foods, but things that are in packages that have labels on them and chemicals on them that you don't even know what they are. Or you drink sugar water and it says it's rich with vitamin C. <laughs> yeah, really, that's kind of like a joke. You know, we need vitamin C, but our bodies just can't make it on their own. So we need to eat a healthy diet, and mm -hmm. we need to probably supplement with a little bit of vitamin C. Yeah. Now, there are times when people get sick that large doses of vitamin C can be very helpful. Now, I know from my own personal experience, because about 20 years ago, I had really serious life-threatening allergies, and I ended up taking 90,000 milligrams a day, or 9... 90 grams right. a day yeah, that's an and I did that for nine months right so there is a wide variation in how much you need to be able to control symptoms so everybody's different you don't just go out and start taking that much or you'll be sorry because your stomach will be upset but for sure. if your body needs it then you can tolerate it well what we're looking at here is the balance okay between how much vitamin C your body needs and how much you're getting in your in your diet when you're sick and there's a lot of free radical stress there are a lot of these chemicals that cause chronic diseases and make us age too fast. When, that, when we're in that situation, we need antioxidants to neutralize them. And vitamin C is one of the most powerful antioxidants we have. I so, remember when you first started using vitamin C to treat people, uh -huh. and you had a girl that had mononucleosis that came to see you in the office, and she was really sick. She came with her dad. Tell, tell that story. Well, she had a fever and she was throwing up and she just felt miserable and she had all the sore throat and the malaise and the fever that goes with mono. And I know that you can treat mono with oral vitamin C to what we call bowel tolerance, which means you give as much as you can orally and see how much the body will accept. Well, her body accepted about 60 grams, okay, of vitamin C over the course of a few hours. And when I told her that I suggested that she take this big dose and that was going to cause watery diarrhea as the end point, she got really agitated about it and said, you know, I feel bad enough the way I am. You don't need to don't add this that. to it. But she felt bad enough and she trusted me, so she went home and did what I told her. And later that, uh, that evening, I said, call me when you finish that. A couple hours later, she called me about 11 that night. She says, I don't believe this. I, yeah, I had diarrhea, but I feel well. I'm up cleaning my room. That's and <laughs> right. And four days later, she went back to school and did her cheerleading, which was something she was doing. So how much vitamin C do you need? Depends on what your situation is. Depends on how much free radical damage you have. It depends on what kind of illness you have. And a good nutritional physician or practitioner, like a naturopath or an MD that's into nutrition, should be able to guide you to that. And then people that can't tolerate a lot of vitamin C orally can have it IV. Intravenously, it doesn't cause any symptoms at all. 
and I often will give up to 150,000 milligrams a day intravenously for people who have certain kinds of illnesses, things like viral hepatitis that's acute, or people who have other kinds of uh, severe illnesses like a, an influenza, or maybe a swine flu that was, re or a bird flu that were really serious, a lot more than they actually turned out to be. I saw you give it to somebody with shingles one time. Shingles. It cleared up her shingles. It cleared it up in about 72 hours, and that was done in the hospital, which is another interesting Doesn't story. Doesn't mean that it does it every time, but, no. you know, it did. And also, it's helpful for cancer sometimes. It's a wonderful treatment for some cancers, and it should be tried because it's not invasive and it's safe. And you may give anywhere between 10 grams and, and maybe 75 grams over a 24-hour period to try and do what you can to make the cancer disappear. Lots of interesting stories on that, and the National Institutes of Health is actually looking into this now in clinical trials. We'll see what they show. Well, I think that vitamin C can have significant effects on public health, and mm -hmm. it's cheap. It costs like about Pennies a, a penny a day if you yeah. take 200 milligrams oh, a day. Oh, right. And even if, the, if the, they don't approve it for the 200 milligrams, I mean, people could, you could do it on anyway. their own anyway. Well, you know, you don't want to just listen to those ivory tower researchers who don't pay much attention to the research that's done in nutritional medicine because there's a bias by doctors on that. You have to remember that the way we're trained, it's through the pharmaceutical industry. And the pharmaceutical industry is not into things that take away from the sale of their products. Yeah, and things that are for prevention. Because vitamin C can actually lower blood pressure. Mm -hmm. It can reduce inflammation, mm -hmm. which is really the major cause of disease anyway. All it, the chronic illnesses. And it can boost immunity. So vitamin C is a pretty good micronutrient. Absolutely. It boosts those natural killer cells. Most of the time in people who have illnesses where that's a problem, like viruses and cancer. So how much vitamin C do you need? It varies with who you are, what your situation is, what do you want to, how much do you want to take to try and keep your, your health at, at the best place that you can. Depends on what your diet is like. If you're getting those five to nine servings of vegetables a day, it's going to be great. If you don't, you may have to supplement. And that's fine.